Hello and welcome back to my scrap room. My name is Jennifer Perry and today we're going to keep working on, I call her Jessica Rabbit, but the name of the actual painting is Not Bad Just Drawn That Way. I wanted to let you know where we're at at the moment. We're just about ready to start this area. I have been working on it away from you and I've gotten quite a bit done. I was able to move the canvas up just a little bit. But we're about to get to a fun part, so I figured I would bring you along. Now, it is currently a little bit after midnight. I've never filmed at night before, so we'll see how this turns out. Let me pull the camera in so you can see what's going on, and I'll be right back. Okay, I know I can probably go a little bit closer in, but I don't want to get too close this time. This is a 2x4 square. I typically work in the 4x4 four four squares that you saw. That's how I initially lay out the painting. And then when I open up the 4x4, four four, then I separate it down into 2x2s. Two or 2, I'm sorry, 2x4s. Two and the reason I do that is because of biscuits. I'm trying to keep as much of this field covered as I can while I'm working in case he decides to walk by and swish his tail. It's easier to keep it covered than it is to pick cat hair out of your canvas. So how is everybody doing? I can't sleep. There's a storm coming in. There's a lot of wind right now, so I'll actually be able to film unless we lose power. But typically on stormy nights, I have a hard time sleeping. Anyway, so we'll just play together and see. Well, I guess we'll just work together until I get sleepy. Hopefully, I will be able to get some sleep tonight. If not, I'll sleep tomorrow. So this next color that I'm working on is 948. The two drills that I just placed was 772. And we just started getting into the fun part of this painting. Where it's more than just greens and... Well, I guess they're more like a flesh tone. Or a peachy apricot color. did her eye area earlier today and it's just been a very lazy day didn't have many household chores that I had to do so I was just able to work on how oh, I hate when I do that I was just able to work on the painting Mike and I did go out in the backyard this evening, or this morning, this morning before coffee, and I had a section of my yard where we bypassed a sprinkler to set up self-watering. Alright, I've got a frog. I'm going to go get a bottle of water real fast. Okay, that's much better. I had a frog in my throat. And it was making me sound weird. Anyway, before our coffee this morning, Mike and I went out in the backyard. And I had a section of yard last year that we bypassed the sprinkler system to set up a self-watering system to water my potted plants. Well, this year I noticed that by bypassing part of that sprinkler system, Part of our backyard now that we are working on getting the weeds removed part of the backyard has died and we didn't realize it last year because we had so many weeds back there that all we could see was green it appeared to be grass so we didn't know we actually killed the grass in our yard so this morning I had him disassemble the watering system for the potted plants and hook up the sprinkler head for that section one more time for me. 
So I'll just have to go out there every day and water those potted plants. It's, it's really not a difficult thing to do. I was just trying to get them on a self system so that when I traveled with him, our plants would still be watered. Now the front yard I was still able to access for the front pots because we bypassed the sprinkler heads that were in the flower beds and that was still okay, still okay because I converted those beds into drip systems and then I just ran lines off the drip system to my potted plants. So those are thriving. But when I tried it in the backyard, I realized this year that we actually took a sprinkler out and that caused damage. When you take a watering source out and don't replace it, which I didn't think about last year, of course you're going to kill your grass. So anyway, hopefully we can get that rectified. But I'm so happy because we bought... I, mean, I told you guys that we had those builder bushes that have been in our our beds for 20 years. We hired a college kid last year to pull those out for us. And I spent some time reworking the beds and pulling root systems. That took forever and I'm still pulling up holly starts and crepe myrtle starts that obviously there's some root systems still there that I didn't get but I amended the soil really well built up the soil really well and then I planted 10 bobo hydrangeas and these hydrangeas are made by proven winners it's the grower they are a smaller variety hydrangea the flowers are the same size, but the actual bush is only three foot by four foot. So it does not get as big as regular hydrangea bushes. And what I like about it is our HOA, we quite, I see you looking at me. The fly's not in here, Biscuits. Yeah, the fly went away. He hears me talking. He saw the camera come on. Uh, now he's, he's on the move. Okay. There might be some tail in the, in the shot, guys. Anyway, I bought those hydrangeas. And I have babied them. Got them in the ground last season. But of course, last season was a, root, a, a growing season to get the roots established. There wasn't much foliage growth and there was no blooms. But when I bought them, they were smaller than four inch cans. They were teeny tiny, so I wasn't expecting blooms. Well, they made it through the winter, and I pruned them back, how you're supposed to prune them back, and every single one of them made it. And I am so happy. I thought I lost one of them. We had to move two of them because they were getting drowned in the spot that they were in. And I thought I lost one of them. But he's slow and he's tiny, but he has leaves. He's trying, so we're gonna leave him alone and let him do his thing. And then I put, I've got some tall urn-like flower pots. And I put caladiums in those. And I did bulbs, but those have not come up yet. So if though if the bulbs do not come up by the time I see live plant caladiums in the garden center, then I'm just gonna replace those with live caladiums. Because I want caladiums and hydrangeas in that bed. And I'm gonna I'm gonna work it. It's gonna it's gonna work that way. And then I also, and I'm not joking when I tell you that really all we have in the backyard is four potted plants, two crepe myrtles that I planted last year, that one of them is trying to die. I think I'm going to lose it. 
everything I have st stuck in that spot has died. I don't know what the problem is. And then one hibiscus. And so far the hibiscus is happy, but I think I'm going to lose both those crepe myrtles that I put in the back. So the back is very empty. Very, very empty. And the reason it is, is we didn't know if we were ever going to build a pool back there. And I didn't want much back there if we were going to build a pool that would have to get ripped out. Well, we decided we didn't want to build a pool that we liked camping more. So we're not going to build a pool, so I'm going to start... I'm going to start planting. And yes, it took us 20 years to make that decision. <laughs> because raising a child is not cheap. So anyway, I'm slowly but surely starting to play in my yard. And with Mike's help getting the irrigation situated, I'm slowly but surely getting it the way I want. So we did that this morning. That was a long explanation for We worked outside this morning for a little bit. And then I got to play with my diamond painting some. I'm a little bit worried about this color because this is all they gave me. And there appears to be more in the painting than there is in the container. I could be wrong. We'll see. So I'm working on this one next, by the way. This is the only color that I'm a little hesitant with that I may, I don't know if I've got some in my drill, my drill case. Although I don't know why I'm worried. It's Diamond Art Club. If I run out, they'll send me more. That's not an issue. Ooh, the wind is blowing. I don't know if you guys can hear it. And I will say I have not had any of the popping drill problems with this canvas that I've had with other brands. I'll have to see when I get my ever moments in how they compare. Because at the moment, my two preferred brands are Ever Moment and Diamond Art Club. The canvas quality on Ever Moments. From what I've seen so far, I've got two that I haven't worked on yet. No, I'm sorry. My other one is uh, the world map is a DAC. Um, I have one that I haven't worked on yet. But the canvas quality is absolutely gorgeous. And then I have two more coming that are ever moments. But the other companies that I have ordered from is my Cella store and... Who I can. I'm about to say, I haven't done home fan. I've done who I can in my cellar store and then Diamond Art Club and Amazon. I've done a few of the Amazon ones. And all the companies are, have done, have had fantastic images and the canvases have been good. I haven't had any problem with canvases, but I've had problems with popping drills. Enough that with the camera canvases, I almost wanted to stop and seal as I was going. So it's been a nice break. Not having popping drills. I, the ones that I have had to go back and fix, I think is bad placement on my part and not popping drills. So if you're wondering why DAC is much more expensive than the other than the other companies, first off, they pay their artists, and then secondly, the canvases are fantastic. They're absolutely gorgeous, and third, the drills are really nice with you know hardly any popping issues. I will say the one thing that I don't like is you don't always get a choice in round versus square. They
do the image how they want it. And I haven't seen, like with Hello Beastie, that was around. I didn't have a choice of square. I would have preferred doing that one in square. But there's there's some paintings you don't have a choice. You just kind of have to do what they, the format in which they choose. And their landscapes are always sold out. I have yet to be able to get my hands on a landscape. And I would love to do one of their landscapes. Did my nightly chores. I was about to go to bed or try and go to bed. And I just went, well, I'm not tired. Which well, is going to kick my butt tomorrow because I want to do laundry tomorrow. And I bet you I'm not going to sleep tonight. And I'm going to be too tired and cranky tomorrow to do laundry. Okay, seven is the next one. I'm about to get into some symbols I haven't worked with yet. I've done seven and nine. I've done Y. I haven't done this symbol and this symbol yet. I'm having to be very careful with the arrows because the arrows are going all directions in this painting. Luckily, the color is not close. So all the arrows are different colors, but I'm still going to have to just be mindful. Oh, I guess he gave up on me and left. There's no longer biscuits in the building. Oh, but that fly is back. I had the back door open for quite a bit today. And I let in a huge fly. So if you hear something buzzing around my head, or around the camera, there's a huge fly in my room. There's really no sense trying to chase it down and it'll be dead by tomorrow. So, I just let it fly till it's a little heart's content. Because either he will die on his own or my cat will find him. So I wonder what's going to get knocked over in the night. We have pulled everything in behind our fence so that it won't get blown down the alley. But you never know what you're going to walk out in the morning and find blown over. Hopefully it's not my fence. Because that wind is strong enough tonight, it might blow the fence over. I know last night the storms were strong enough, it woke me up. And I was really worried about the freezers. I was worried that it tripped one of the breakers and my freezers were off. So I actually crawled downstairs, turned off the alarm system, checked the freezers, and then went back to bed. So now I need the arrows pointing right. Ooh, that's a pretty color. 3830. That's pretty. So if you happen to be in the diamond painting group on Facebook, well, of course, I did that. I guess for you, I posted a picture last month of my drills all over my desk where I spilled. And what happened is I was listening to a book, and it scared me as I was trying to put the drills back in the container. 
and it opened up this conversation of sympathy for having to clean up your drills, but it also opened up a conversation of what in the world was I listening to during my diamond painting. And the book that I listened to the most, or the set of books that I listened to the most, are Nora Roberts or J.D. Robb. And I was listening to J.D. Robb in this instance, and it's a murder mystery. And what scared me was just the voice raised. It, I had forgotten that it raised in this particular area, and it just scared me. So we got to talking about the J.D. Robb in death books in the group and finished the book that I was on and decided, you know what? There's a new book coming out in September. I can't remember what it is at the moment, but there's a new book coming out in September. And now would be a fine time to start over with the series. And start with book one and just listen through the entire series so that when September gets here, I will be, I'll have all of the cases in my head for when the new book comes out. It is 12.45, do we want to, oh yeah, let's open up this, this is small, we can do this one. I'm going to just keep working on the color that I just had. Just trying to figure out it's, you know, did I have enough time to open this section up and get it done? Or was I sleepy? I don't think I am yet. So I have started the book series over, and in the last two days, I have read two of the books or listened to them while I'm painting, and I just started book. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I did not. I, I started with book two because I have listened to book one so many times I know that storyline. So I actually started with book two. That's right. And I just started, I finished book two and I just started book three. So that actually sounds better that I'm not just blowing through the books. I'm actually enjoying them. And then by the time the new book shows up, I will be well versed again. So I've read Glory and Death. And I just started in Mortal and Death. And the first book is Naked and Death, and I've already read that one a ton. Now see now, I have been working with this color almost the entire canvas. And now it's got one drill in this entire field right here. So that's kind of nice. I'm still having to reach for it, but I only have to reach for it for one drill. Oh, done. Okay. And this is that one that I need to check every single time because the drill color and the canvas color are not the same. And I'm just checking one more time. Although by this point, if I had the drill wrong, I would be in some serious trouble because I would have to take out all of these to figure out which ones were right. So, but I just checked and I'm still good. And if you've been with me for this canvas, you know that every time I pick up this color, I double check it. Because if you can see, you can tell that the drill and the background color are not the same. gap there. I wonder why. Oh, that's a tiny little, that's a wee little drill. We have a bigger drill. Oh, that's a bigger drill, but still have a gap there. Okay, well hopefully once it fills in, it will straighten itself out. I'm going to get 
that one little Y that's out there in the island by itself. And then I'll do the 310. Okay, are we ready for three tens? So I'm mesmerized by the sound of outside. I keep forgetting to have a conversation with you because I'm listening to the wind. The tornado sirens are literally one street over. And I can hear them really well from this room. Not so much from our bedroom. So if those go off, I will need to leave you and go wake up my husband. They were talking about softball size hail and severe weather. So we will just pray that it's just regular wind and not much damage. Yeah, not that one. That one is covered up by this strip, so if I try to put a drill on there, it's not going to stick. So hopefully the filming quality of this night session is pretty good. Because if it is, then I will be able to continue to film once my mom is back home. I will just be able to film at night while she is asleep so that she's not realizing that I'm filming and trying to ask me questions. I'll just do it while she's sleeping and get one take instead of several broken takes and it just makes it for easier editing. And it makes it easier for her because she feels bad when she interrupts. Well, I'm almost tempted to open the window so you guys could hear the wind. Well, it appears this is going to be one of those nights that I'm very quiet. And don't talk much while I'm filming. It's kind of an odd balance because it's like, okay, what do you want to know? Do I just randomly talk or is there things that you you want to know? And sometimes the, the random talking, you just kind of almost run out of things to say. Okay. So I'm going to work a little bit backwards for a moment. So I'm going to get that one before I lose this, the light on this. And I forget that's there. So let's do that one real fast. And I am starting to get sleepy. All it takes is turning on the camera, joining you guys. And I either get hungry or sleepy. I haven't figured out why. Oh, I have to tell you. I was editing the other day, and I always get really hungry when I edit. And I'm trying to curb that because I'm also on Weight Watchers. So I'm trying to curb the whole snack while you're editing thing. But I hadn't had lunch yet, so my husband was going to go down and get a snack. He, he was stopping working long enough to get a snack. And I called down and I was like, you know, do you mind just bringing me up some cheese and crackers? Because he does regular portion size portions. And my portion sizes are feeding three people. So normally when I ask him to, to bring me up a snack or something, it's because he actually does proper portions. So I asked him to bring me up some, some triscuits and, and cheese. And I don't know who he thought he was going to feed. Because I actually asked him, was this meant for one person or were we sharing? I think he used half a block of cheese and a half a box of triscuits. For me. I'm kind of ashamed to say I ate it all. It was good. Um, I definitely ate way more than my points that day. But I was editing. And I couldn't help myself. But it was good. I mean, I could have been eating candy. 
least it was something semi good for me. So, but I had to die laughing because normally the sweet man that does proper portion control totally went over the edge. Of course, you know, it could have really been for two people and he was scared to take the plate away. That would really be part of it too, because I like cheese and crackers. That's one thing with this self-isolation that we are still under. I have been buying more snack food than I normally do. I normally don't have processed food in my house at all. But I have definitely been buying more snack food than we are used to eating. So I think that's going to be a hard habit to break again whenever we're free to roam about the, the towns and cities like we're, you know, are used to doing. Because, and I think why I've been doing this is, or, you know, normally I would not keep processed foods in the house because A, we don't eat a lot of it, but B, if we needed fresh fruit or veg, I didn't mind going to the store every other day or every two days to buy fresh fruits and vegetables and always have fresh fruit to snack on or or even triscuits and apples and stuff like that to snack on but right now you know all of us are really trying to limit how many times we go to the grocery store how many times we you know expose ourselves or others and sometimes when we go to the grocery store what we're looking for is not there but the snack aisle is, you know, so if what I would normally eat is not available, then I'll go over to the Triscuits and Cheese aisle. Or the other day, well, I don't know what got into me, but I was craving hot dogs. And I normally don't do hot dogs ever at home unless it's a holiday or we take them camping. And I was craving hot dogs. So, you know, what letter am I doing? And... So I went over and I picked up a pack of hot dogs, some buns, and some chips. I never have chips in the house. So don't you know, of course, now with every lunch, I've made a sandwich and had chips. And I don't know if it's part of comfort eating or part of just not having a, you know, what we would normally buy readily available or a little bit of everything. But man, we have been doing some comfort eating. Even my husband, because I made the mistake of taking him with me one time to Walmart. You know, I said, hey, if, you know, is there anything you need while we're here? And he went down the snack aisle and, whew, the stuff he put in that buggy. So it could be a little bit of everything in. Am I doing it? Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun when we get to back to normal life, just trying to get our diet situated back the way we're used to eating. And that was the other thing, if I don't buy some of my sugar-free coffee creamer soon, I'm going to revert back to the way I used to make my coffee, which was one creamer and three sugars. And... I'm afraid that's going to be a hard habit to break again once I start it up again. So hopefully when I pop into Kruger this week, they will have some coffee creamer. I know, first world problems, totally get it. Shouldn't be complaining, and not really complaining. Just observations. I was very happy to be able to find some flour and milk and fresh fruit for my mother-in-law and I took that out there to her yesterday because she's in the age group that we definitely don't want in the stores at the moment so I don't mind when I go to the store getting her list also and picking up what she needs and thankfully the cashiers at my store, they know that 
because I I always shop for her because she does live so far out that I always am picking something up for her. So they're used to me doing, okay, this is my order and this is my mother-in-law's order. You know, they're used to me having a, um, a split basket, so to say. So they don't question if I'm buying, you know, two gallons of milk or two loafers, loaves of bread because I truly do know that one's for me and one's for my mother-in-law. Because I've always shopped that way. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't have a cashier trying to limit what I'm buying. Okay. And thankfully that's just because the cashiers know me. I have some strawberries right now in the fridge that I need to process and cut up tomorrow. I kept forgetting to do it today. And if I wait too long, they're going to end up in the freezer for smoothies. But I guess in order to make smoothies, I'm going to have to go buy a blender because I blew my blender up. And I just haven't replaced it yet. Because it is not a critical item. But I was trying to make a smoothie and my blender just went, nope, not today. And stopped working right in the middle of making a smoothie. should be next. Well, I think it's because this sheet is on kind of crooked, so the, over here is available and open, but over here is not. It's halfway up. So I think what I'm feeling are these two. Yeah, because see these two. I'm sorry, I had to show them at you. These two are not open either, so... I think I'm going to do this section and then I probably will not come back and film until we're like way farther down and I'm able to open the canvas up some more because if not I'm going to have 50 videos of just this one canvas and I want to have a little bit more diversity on the channel than just oh holy crap oh thank goodness the lid was on Although these are orange, I could have found them in the carpet. What? Oh my goodness, thank you, the lid was on. But what I was saying is I don't want to have, you know, 25 videos, it's just one canvas. So I may finish this little section and then come back when I'm farther down the canvas. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. Because I'm on the fence. Because I, I watch other whip YouTube processes. And I like the continuity. Of watching a canvas open up but I also like looking at different canvases so I'm on the fence about what to do okay so I'm not gonna be able to do this row because it's just not sticky enough the parchment paper is over it
think what I might do. Let me pour these back in before I spill. Okay, so I pulled the camera out some figures here. I'm going to move this square because it's blocking this section right here. And I want to open that up. So I'm going to close that. And I'm going to put this right here. And then I can still get this over here. So these two are lining up. And I can still get those right there. Yeah, I do tend to move my squares around as I'm working to either straighten up a square or bring it in closer or open it up or so just because there's a four by four square on the canvas doesn't mean that's where it's staying until I pull it off to work on that section. See now that I've moved this one that is opened up so I've got one one little drill over there I need to place. And these brown parchment papers I save and reuse. I just have a little bucket off to the side that whenever I take them off the canvas I put them in that bucket and I just reuse them. I throw away the opaque ones, but I reuse these brown ones. Okay, and then this arrow that's pointing left. I will check myself. Yes. Okay, the colors in this painting have been so pretty. Although I'm a sucker for colors. I've been a scrapbooker for, oh good lord, since 2002. Cardstock has always been a passion. Colors always been a passion. But I've always loved paper and color, so these drawer colors are giving me a soft spot. In fact, the company that I use for my scrapbooking is close to my heart. I was a consultant for them for 15 years. And they still have the best scrapbooking products, in my opinion, so I still order from them. And they're doing a virtual National Scrapbooking Day, I think on May 2nd. So I ordered all of the kits and supplies to go with those so that I can work along with my, my old playmates that weekend. Okay, one more color and then, then we'll be done. So it will be fun to, to see some of the ladies that I've worked with for a long time. There we go. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. It is a late night diamond painting session, but we made it. I only yawned a few times. I know that you have 101 things that you could be doing, and I am very, very thankful that you choose to spend just part of your day with me. Until next time, bye-bye.